Most times, what changes the trajectory of our lives is not entirely the events that have happened. It's our emotional response to the things that have happened. I've always been an extremely passionate person. I feel things deeply. I have a very expressive personality style. And when you are someone that is high-spirited, it is hard for you to control this spark, this energy within us that we often exude without control. If you are someone that is emotionally expressive, like me, if you cannot hide the look on your face when you are emotionally affected by something, this also means you. When we are in the feelings of joy and bliss, everybody is happy around us. We have the ability to light up the entire room. But when we are feeling opposite of that, when we are feeling not our best, unfortunately, other people have the ability to feel that as well. And even when we are silent, we affect most people. At first, it's annoying and it feels unfair because when you are someone that stands out, it often feels like you're under surveillance. People are looking at you and looking to you for your reactions to things or lack thereof. Some people are looking for ways to feel inspired, while others may be looking for things to inflict judgment upon, like a lot of people do, especially on the internet. And in this act of trying to protect ourselves from this judgment, we're just being perceived. We put this pressure on ourselves and it gets to feel like we're not able to be human like everyone else is. I want this video to be a lesson to all of the people that feel like they are chosen, anyone that feels like they have an anointing on their life, that the gift of our life also comes with a burden of restraint and the level of control that we have to have and we have to develop in order to pursue our purpose. The experiences in our lives and the cards that we were dealt we know if someone else had the ability to play our hand, they would not know what to do with it. And this requires us to show up in ways that are challenging, but it is also to make us better. This teaches us how to lead with integrity and build emotional stamina. And being in control of this gift of light, this gift of passion, is what really shifts the trajectory of our life for the better. When we are no longer a slave to our emotions and constantly receiving the consequences of our lack of control, we are unstoppable. I had to accept that when much is requested, much is required. In this video, I will be talking about the layers of being emotionally reactive and how it affects us. Also, how we can alchemize this characteristic into a superpower and use it as a boost to our manifestation power. Welcome to the Raw and a Half podcast, where we get real and then some. I am your host, Jasmine Siri, and every week I will speak on different topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind so we can accomplish our goals from a healed and open place together. So let's get started. Build situational flexibility to develop emotional stamina. So in the situations that happen in our life, we will bend, but we won't break. I think it's important for us to get back to a sense of flexibility and openness to different outcomes. For a very long time, I existed with a strong sense of internal justice. Right was right, wrong was wrong in my mind. And in my efforts to be a good example, I forgot the unpredictability that being a human comes with. A lot of life had to happen to me. I had to make a lot of mistakes. And a lot of worldviews had to change within the mind to get me to this point. And now that I'm almost 30, with a lot of tools of experience under my belt and still with room for more, I realize that a lot of events that have happened in my life would not have affected me so greatly if I had already developed the flexibility to not see things in such extremes. When we define the characters in our story as good or bad, or we mark the events in our lives as good or bad, and not just simply services that help us gain mental and emotional stamina, it validates a version of ourselves that keeps us in the comfortability of victimhood. And it makes us feel exempt for the work and the lessons that we need to learn in the in-between. 
reacting emotionally is saying, because I'm still surprised by the lack of control I have over you, my loved ones, my friends, over the situation, the only thing that I can do is let everyone in the world know just how much it's affecting me. And when we're young and naive, we think it's doing something to everyone else and all it's doing is affecting us, changing our relationships. Because although we didn't entirely mean what we said when we were mad, that was their last straw. And because of the work that they're doing on themselves, they can't see you the same without betraying themselves. They can't enter a new relationship or a different relationship with you without it being something that they really have to work on. And now that everybody's nervous system is dysregulated, now that our cortisol levels are super low, we have the audacity to claim that another person is supposed to come in and love us back into regulation. And we think someone is just going to pour so much into us that it's going to make us forget all of the messed up things we just did to everyone else because we did not know how to control our emotions. And what we want is to be poured into, but what we really need is an intervention. And the people closest to you are too close for you to hear them. So I was sent here to be that person to break the ice between you and the divine. Because when we are disappointed and we're angry and we lash out in the moments and we hurt other people, when we actually have an opportunity to sit with God, we go completely silent. We don't talk about that. And I feel like God just sits and waits for us. And after a while, it's like, okay, you're not ready yet. I'll just come back when you're ready to get real with yourself. Because if you want me to work in your life, you have to be able to work with me in your heart. And in order to really get to the good stuff, we have to keep it real with ourselves enough to realize that we have the ability to hurt people. Maybe we didn't handle that situation 100% to the best of our abilities, but there's room to learn. You know, I just don't think that we get to blame everybody else for everything that happens to us, create these emotion, emotional reactions and assume that no one else is going to be affected by that too. It just doesn't work like that. I'll give you a testimony of my own. I remember a couple of weeks back, I was heartbroken by something my mother did. And there's still parts of me that are very, very, you know, not all the way well with it. But, you know, I'm trying to move forward. I accept my mom as a human being. You know, there's still love, of course. Um, but there was a situation that happened where I was speaking with my family and it just became so overwhelming that I just like completely did no contact but for real but the difference between like me doing no contact and maybe someone else is that when I am not talking to someone I will hold on to that for years years and it's not something that I'm proud about I don't know why when I don't see you I just don't care about you anymore there's something in my heart that I'm trying to heal um but I kept thinking about all of the ways I was justified in doing the things that I did of completely cutting them out of my life, cutting them out of my experience. And I was taking a shower and I could just feel the heart of my mom. And like, I know her for who she is and just kind of like her doing the best that she can, but still like being human and being a mom and just going through the emotions of like having children or having a daughter that is really hurt by you, you know, as an adult, it's not like you can say, Hey, let's go get something to eat and open the door and say you hungry. You know, sometimes when things happen on deeper levels, when there's different levels of betrayal that happen in our adult lives, because they're fresh and we're still trying to, you know, carry our lives together when things happen to us we don't handle them the right way and I think it was an opportunity for me to like like really get myself together in a way that like I knew God was like you're wrong you know like you it was like how dare you it was it was I felt it so seriously and I just started you know of course crying because that's what I do I'm a crybaby. um 
And immediately I was like, I know that there will be a consequence if I do not repent and apologize. I know as much as my pride and my ego wants this punishment of me not speaking to them ever again to really deliver, you know, have its, you know, effects. But really, what is that doing? That's not doing anything but hurting me. So I, outside of whatever I think someone needs to apologize to me, because God requires me to show up in a certain way because of who I am, who I call myself to be, the service that I want to give to others. I have to do something I really don't want to do, which is call the person that broke my heart and tell them that I'm sorry. And I did. And my mother was the same person that she was (laughs) <laughs> when I wasn't talking to her she is going to be who she is and I love her so much but I was sorry and it was my job and it was my due diligence to apologize now that was just one scenario there's so many scenarios where if we are not quiet enough to listen we are going to mess up and damage something very good There are certain bridges that will leave you stranded if you decide to burn them. And because I understood the weight of how I felt, but how maybe childish in spirit it was for me to assume I could do something as definite as never speak to my mother ever again, it's, it just, it didn't make any sense. And I felt like I had to share that because that's real and I might regret sharing that. But if there is someone that is maybe going through something similar, I hope I get them over the hump because after you make that call, after you decide to do the thing, you do it for yourself, not for anyone else, not for any reward or pat on the back and you realize that, mm, even the person I have, I apologized to didn't realize how much this meant for me to do. You know, you don't realize how much it took me to pick up my phone and call and apologize. You don't know what God is doing with my pride. And um, we do these things because of our obedience. And I will say, I felt so much lighter that was like an awakening that happened just something very small and I think that's the crazy that's the well it's kind of like this funny thing about it it's like we want the universe we want the divine to do all of these grandiose things in our lives and make the break every you know break every barrier in our lives and it's like we are the barriers in our lives that he's trying to break he can't even reach us And I remember um, one of my friends, I was talking to her and she was basically saying like, you know, um, God can't come down any further to us. We have to come up to meet him. And that was what it was like once I apologized and it was just like a little chuckle, a little laugh. I smiled when I got off the phone. It was what it was. You know, I felt so much lighter. I felt like I was floating. I felt like I was in a different dimension. My skin just felt just clean. My chest felt light. Just for those few moments, I was able to breathe better. And that was something that I needed to do. And um, mm, I hope that serves you because it, it really did something. It really changed something for me. But do you see how if I didn't make that step, how emotionally manipulative our reactions could easily become? Do you see how staying in victimhood so long ultimately makes you the villain in someone else's story? Do you see how it has made you maybe the villain in your own story? Because yes, you know, things happen. We show up as human. We realize that there's a better way that we could have handled things, but we have to admit that we could have done better because that was actually a learning opportunity 
that I could have easily missed had I stayed in my pride. Who knows what type of blessings I would have blocked by still keeping that in my heart. And in these things that happen, in the mistakes, they're going to keep happening, right? We're human. We make mistakes. But that's why I think humility is so powerful. It's only until you see yourself as, you know, the clear villain in someone else's story that you see that we truly are the same. We're not victims. You know, we have the ability to love and hurt people just as much. And that's when, like, I finally got it and I understood, like, in order for me to change my emotional reactions, I actually had to have the humility enough to love others and react and respond in a way that was through love, not through like judgment or disappointment because we are all the same. You know, we're all constantly either seeking something, longing for something, whether it be love, attention, understanding, resources. I had to stop seeing my life in black or white, good or bad, because it is obviously so much more. Were your parents or caregivers emotionally reactive? Sometimes, you know, most of our parents are being raised while raising us. And I had an extremely reactive parent. Not to make this an excuse because I am responsible for how I choose to show up in the world. But it did take some unlearning. And until you realize it, you're not going to be able to do the work until you're intentional about like seeing it, seeing in ways it shows up. If I could vividly remember the ways that I felt when I was younger and the person responsible for me had no idea how to raise or teach me to make true impact on my behavior outside of an emotional triggering, I would turn myself around to make sure I'm not doing it to someone else. And it's, it, it takes a lot. And if we're really getting deep, I feel like there's a part of it that stems from slavery and it makes me deeply enraged because I should be compensated for all of the work that I'm having to do. I feel like this is just, you know, just putting it out there. But anyway... I've had parents who were also in the military, so the breaking, you know, the rearing of the child, it's just a little different, and I'm probably a little bit more tough because of it. I'm able to process things, and I have a, a lot more of a strategical mindset, so I'm happy about it, but it was an experience nonetheless, and if you were a military child, and if one or both of your parents were in the military... Put like a little flag in, in the comment box below because you're going to understand, you're going to feel what I'm talking about, you know? But anyway, I just recently, I got a glimpse of my grandmother's emotional response to things and how even her best is not an effective way that I can genuinely say looks like love, you know? And I realized that it was a bigger picture and it is a responsibility that I have to speak on it, not because speaking on it will change them or change the way that they view it, but by my acknowledging of a system that no longer works, it gives me more room for healing. It gives me an opportunity to do the work within myself so that I can just have a better future for whatever children I may bring into the world you know I feel like it's worthy enough for me to invest into it now regardless if I have children or not I'm I'm doing the work so that I can be of service to someone somehow anytime I've looked also at a male partner who was emotionally reactive, I knew he was raised by a mother that was emotionally manipulative and reactive by nature. And I can't even blame them because I was also going through the same thing, you know, like, but they have to be aware enough to also want to do the work. You know, I have nothing for them if like we both can't see it enough to like want to try to change and be better. But yeah, I think 
overall, like with all of the things that I've seen, all of the things that I've like become aware to, I've had to realize the situation for what it was and detach by letting it go. Doesn't it suck? Like sometimes it feels good to hold on to the things that people did to us because it, it gives us uh, an excuse to maybe use their actions as a form of punishment to make us feel powerful, make us feel like we have the upper hand, but it really, it, it really doesn't serve anyone. Um, I've been watching and listening to videos about the let them theory. And it's basically, you know, when you see things happening outside of your control, we have to let them happen. When the person we love does the thing that is undesirable to the, to us, we have to let them because the frustration of not letting the people we love be who they are does more damage to us than the situation actually deserves you know emotional reactivity stems from a level of entitlement and if we aren't mindful we're just walking around being little karens and i know you don't want to be that when you constantly complain about the problem you express so much energy through worry that you're almost giving power to the problems I know someone that complained so much about being an adult. I literally had to stop talking to them because like, okay, you got your car note, you got your bills, you got your things that you've had for years now. And I, I get it. I have all the same things too, but God forbid anything really devastating happen in your life because if you can't handle the everyday responsibilities that come with just being an adult, how else are you going to be able to handle anything else? Like, I don't necessarily identify or subscribe to situations where people are constantly, you know, complaining about the same thing, not really doing anything about it, but because they just need to complain, they like to do it to like build community, like, uh, I, uh, it just doesn't feel good to me. I don't like being in that vibration, like... At some point, we just got to like, let it go. And you know what? I experienced this on an extreme level. It's like we invest so many emotions on the things that happen. And that is a waste of energy. And we could be putting that towards something that could actually help and benefit us in the long run. For example, when actors get auditions or when you're young and you get auditions, right? You think every audition that you get is going to be the thing that's going to change your life and you experience so many highs because we do do a lot of investing into that that time. We we get the audition and we were chosen to get this audition because of, you know, our type, you know, where we are, all the things we start diving into the dialogue we create an objective we get a reader we set up we do all of this creativity and for this little moment we put so much energy and passion into telling this little snippet of the story and it's like we send it off and it it's like we feel like the jitters of what could potentially happen if you know, we were chosen. It's, it's like we invest all of this energy and it's wasteful. If we actually, I saw this TikTok where this guy was speaking about like, if we put and invest so much energy into that, all we're going to do is attract more situations where we're investing all of our energy on that but if we view it as like okay yeah that's just one audition I'll have thousands more auditions to do hopefully I get more opportunities to have more auditions if it works cool if it doesn't great it just wasn't meant for me I think like that is the perfect like gear shift to change it it, it was it was amazing it was awesome for me like I was able to have more fun in my auditions and in my, 
just my delivery. I was having fun with my self tapes because like it was fun for me. I was just like, I'm just going to show them something, you know, I'm just going to fuck them up with this. You know, they ain't seen this. It, it felt like that. And the more I started doing things like that, I would get good feedback about my my audition. And even if I didn't get the job, there was a situation where I auditioned for something. Anyway, it doesn't matter what I auditioned for. <laughs> the character that I was auditioning for, when they sent it to me, I knew it was for someone older. But I still read it anyway, you know, because it, it, it was something fun for me to do. Honestly, I really wanted to kind of like explore I was having fun and I think when you are auditioning so many times it is good to kind of stretch yourself in that way so I did it and there was a part of me that knew I wasn't gonna get it but I had fun while doing it and so when the audition was over after like a couple of weeks I just kind of let it go and they emailed me and they just wanted to speak with me they just wanted to like get on a zoom call with me because they really liked experiencing my audition they were so sucked in and I'm like damn like thank you and they were like um we don't have anything for you but we were just so you know pleased by your audition we really wanted to tell you to your face that you did an amazing job you're just so young looking and I'm like I know I know but anyway it's like we waste so much time and energy on the things that really do not matter if we waste so much time on the disappointment Every single time things don't necessarily go our way and we do all of these great, grand, expressive things, I, I wonder if you ever stop and think like, how could this energy push me forward if I just, instead of doing this, I did that, you know, I'm someone that loves to like be the underdog. I've been an underdog pretty much my entire life and what I love about being the underdog is that, yes, you are underestimated, but because you're the only person that knows your power, you're the only person that can see your talent, when you actually rise, when you actually reach the surface, people are so shocked. And it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of grinding and, and teaching yourself new things and gathering so much information so that when you actually reach the surface you're so undeniable that you surpass every person that has ever doubted you but anyway having passion and enough energy to express is powerful we just have to use that power and alchemize the energy to bring our manifestations closer to us by the work and the steps that we take to develop discipline you know like I said I'm an underdog. I've been an underdog my entire life. And all that did was make me a monster at perseverance. I had to do so much proving people wrong that when I actually got to the journey of not having to prove anything to anyone, I could just coast in the work. I could have the endurance, the things that I work for. I've wanted more than wanting other people to see me have it. And I developed a strong inner belief in myself I developed a stronger power of perseverance I became immovable and it helped me push the needle to my manifestations I think that is all that I have for today I just want to say thank you all so much for getting this far thank you for liking commenting and subscribing if you found me I'd love to know in the comments what video you found me from, how it made you feel. Thank you for just giving me all of your feedback and letting me know how much my videos have poured into you and are a part of your journey. Do not forget to follow me on Instagram at jasmine.siri. Send me an email if you want to talk a little bit deeper. Um, I'm also on Spotify at The Raw and a Half Podcast. I hope you download it, rate it, review it. It really means so much. It helps me a lot. This is my dream coming true. Thank you so much for being a part of that and a part of this community. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.